Amen. Uh, wow, that's nice and loud. It keeps you all awake. We're very energised by that last session and looking forward to this one uh, this afternoon. My name is Anne McElvoy. I'm Senior Editor at The Economist and I also run our podcast called The Economist Asks and we're going to be broadcasting this session uh, in the next week or so with my very honoured guest, Matteo Renzi. Welcome, lovely Good to afternoon. Good have afternoon. you uh, along. Give him over in of course. The end of a previous session was absolutely more enthusiastic. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You've got a lot to rise to. Um, when we come to you for questions, I hope that you can ululate and uh, ask away. <laughs> but uh, bear with me just to read the introduction, just because it will then be for broadcast, and then we'll go straight into the conversation. My guest here at the Global Skills and Education Forum is Matteo Renzi, the former Prime Minister of Italy and author of Another Road, Ideas for an Italy of Tomorrow. He's no stranger to the rough and tumble of European politics and cut a bold swathe through it as the youngest Prime Minister in Italy's history when he came to power in 2014. Mr. Renzi was known as the scrapper for his robust intention to take on the Italian political... Uh, it's, whoops. Mr. Renzi was known as the scrapper for his robust intention to take on the Italian political establishment. But in 2016, he lost power after a failed constitutional referendum. Since last summer, his country has been governed by the Five Star Alliance of New Wave Populists and the ultra-conservative Northern League. That's a long way from the Renzi centrist recipe. But he's also been critical of institutional Europe's approach to Italy's economic difficulties and its general reluctance to reform. What might culture and education do in playing a role here, making the political process in Italy and beyond work better for the common good? Matteo Renzi, welcome to The Economist Asks here in Dubai. Good morning. Good afternoon to everyone. You've said that Europe is sinking in the red tape of bureaucracy. This is holding it back in finding a solution good for future generations. What do you mean? I believe in Europe. I think Europe um, was one of the great uh, results of international politics, is one of the great hope for international order, and will be a great dream for the generation of my son, of my daughter. But I know Europe risks a lot we have a lot of problems uh, today. We have the first problem, of course, is Brexit. Nobody understands what happened. But there is a problem for the next years. What is now Europe? Europe is clear. Europe uh, was the place of peace. My grandfather went to Paris to make, went to France to, to make the war. My son will uh, go to Paris to make Erasmus. This is clear. Um, Europe permit to a very important uh, countries to grow up. Today, Europe is 7% of GDP around the world. Sorry, 7% of population. 25% of GDP and 49% of welfare state around the world. But in the next years, Europe will be again leader. This is the question. And for me, a lot of European leaders, a lot of European politicians lost a lot of opportunities with the discussion focused on the red tape of bureaucracy, focused only about uh, uh, rules, laws, and not about soul, about a dream, about ideal. This is the question. For me, Europe is great. If we come back to a great idea of uh, uh, vision and not only about today's division. I'm going to make one very small interruption to say this is a toe-tapping subject, but your toe-tapping might not sound yes. <laughs> quite so good when, when broadcast. I don't know if it is, is possible. What should we do? Just sort of nail for Mr. Renzi's feet to the... <laughs> talk about nailing a politician to their promises. <laughs> I'm Italian politician, so it's yeah, terrible. Well, so you, yes, you've got a sense of rhythm. But let's dig into that then. I mean, you've said, at on one point you've said, I think, in the past that populists may be able to beat traditional parties once, but eventually reality will beat the populists. That sounded very upbeat. 
And yet, one could say that the trend is running against you across Europe, whether it's populism in Italy or whether it's disruptions, whether or not one calls them populism like Brexit. Are we going to have a long wait for your prediction to come true? Populism means a lot of things. Nobody could describe populism with an only uh, quote. Populism is a Trump, and uh, if we ch uh, populism is Italian government. If we discuss about uh, um, single policies, it's impossible for us to describe the same populism between Trump and the Italian government. For taxation, for example, uh, Trump reduced taxation, Italian government increased taxation. But if we think about around the world, Latin America, I use the, um, a lot of examples. Uh, Morales in Bolivia is populist and uh, he permits drug um, presence in uh, Bolivia. And uh, the president of Philippines, Duterte, is populist, is uh, proposed the death for the people who use drugs. Uh, Bolsonaro and Maduro are populist, but totally different, so in other words. Populism will be not possible to describe in terms of policies. We have to find something of different to describe populism. Who is populism? What is populism for me? First, is the fear about the future. The message is that after a lot, a lot of years, after decades, in the future will be worse than today. And this is a very strong message for young generation. Oh, no. Example, education. Don't study. Because the disruption in the Internet of Things, in the digital revolution, will destroy jobs. And so we will have a world dominated from robots. This is false. This is a stupid thing. OK, yeah, we will have a great digital revolution in front of us. But in every period of the history of the man of the woman, in every period, in every period, after a revolution, we will have a new modality of create job. And the point is that populism play a very important role on the fear, on the preoccupation. The real challenge for the older people is gave a, give a different vision, an alternative narrative. And this is the problem of Europe of today, because we are not able to offer that. And why do you think that is? I'm thinking about your centre-left political campaign, institutional Europe with, with the new European Parliament about to be uh, voted on shortly, it really has been in retreat. You've said yourself, liberal leaders found themselves sitting in a kind of hecatomb. So something has gone wrong that is not just to be blamed on the populists for doing it differently or better or worse. What has gone wrong? I think populism won in a lot of countries also for international wave. And Brexit maybe was the first step of this wave. And wave uh, starting from UK in a referendum continued with uh, Trump victory in uh, USA, touched also Italy with the, our defeat in referendum. I joked this morning because I ate a referendum. I lost my job for a referendum. And uh, I You found, shouldn't have called it then. I found a club with David Cameron. David Cameron <laughs> is the president. I'm the deputy president. <laughs> but the difference is David decided to organize a referendum. For me, it was an obligation, constitutional obligation. So sorry. But uh, I, I think that this wave of populism now, now show the problems. Let me be very clear. It's easy to win an electoral campaign with a lie. But then reality show the check, show the bill. Uh, please, do you remember the discussion about Brexit? Oh, with the Brexit in the UK, we will have hospital very good. What is the link between Brexit and the hospital NHAs? But we remember, everyone, the discussion about Brexit. Brexit spoke about first 
hospital, NHS. Second, migration. Nothing about migration in the deal. And a lot of things. It's easy to win a referendum with a lie. Actually, it's not, can I, just, I must interrupt you because actually we should come on to where we are now. But the Theresa May deal did intend to put migration at the heart of it. The question is that it doesn't appear to be about to prevail. So what have we learned, as well as your thesis that uh, those that you don't agree with uh, don't conduct what you see as truthful campaigns, but what have you learned from it? Migration is, the again, a question about fear, because nobody could believe in the idea we block migration because we block 50 people, 10, uh, 100 people, 1,000 people, when Africa, in the next 25 years, 30 years, also this morning in the plenary, we, we, we discussed about it, Africa will have, in the next 25 years, the double of citizens of today. Nigeria, there was here the former president of Nigeria, will become, in the next 25 years, the third country on the world in terms of population, after China and India. So, really, we think the question of migration is about 10 people, 100 people, 1,000 people in our uh, streets? No. And let me be very clear. The problem about security cannot close in the problem of migration. Because Jihadi John grew up in the school of UK. Jihadi John was the killer of ISIS, do you remember? The killer of Daesh, the killer who uh, used a, a very professional camera to show the killing mm. in uh, Syria, in, uh, in, in Libya, in Syria. And uh, he grew up he, in UK, not in Syria. Um, killer of Bataclan grew up in Brussels, in Molenbeek, Banlieue, not in uh, Syria or Afghanistan. The question is that we have a great emergency in education more than in migration, because education below, in the education there is also migration. The, Theresa May and other leader also in my country use migration only because it's easy to use the fear. It's easy to use the uh, Instagram and uh, call a like simply with a message of fear about migration. But we know consistently that the, the, the populations want some kind of management about migration and that leaders who fall foul of that tend to fall foul of their popula populations. Would it not be better for liberals like yourself to acknowledge that rather than simply taking the argument very broad and saying it's all about fear mongering? I, I, I know this is a question. I know there is a problem. I know there is the, the, the limit. I discussed with a lot of uh, leaders around the world, first of all, with the President Obama. He told me, ah, Matteo, you cannot accept everyone. It's clear. But let me be very clear. I was Prime Minister during a crisis of migration, and I tried to save every man, every woman, every child in the sea, because first of all came the life, and then came the polls, the election and the rate of uh, consensus. This is the first. I try to save everyone. <laughs> Second point, the welcome. Okay, what is the strategy for Europe in the future? My view. Continue a battle between the UK and the uh, border uh, or the wall of Orban or other things, or we start finally a strategy in Africa. Let me be very clear also in this point. Today, London is the fourth or fifth city, Italian city. <laughs> London, yeah. You can say, oh, this man uh, we get don't all the good know the geography. Uh, yeah, in my government, there are also people who don't know the geography. But this is a, 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 it's not that. <laughs> this, this means in London, the number of Italian are unbelievable. After Milano, after Roma, Milano, Torino, Napoli, there is London as a number of citizens. So we know, we know how many important is migration, at example, in, for example, in the uh, UK or in other, in other uh, countries. But the question today is invest in Africa, because the only one who understand that today is Xi Jinping. I remember a website in Italian newspaper, your colleague in Italy, 
in the same day, Salvini, Salvini is the Minister of Far, of Far Internal Affairs, a leader of far right in my country, my rival. And he explains the position of Italian government. We block 49 people who came from Eritrea. Oh. Oh. We're blocking the boats and out of our borders in Sicily. Yeah. And in the same page of website, the news about Xi Jinping agreement in China with 60 billion euro paid by China to invest in Africa. My idea is stop with the stupid discussion in Europe about a single point and we have to open a new Marshall Plan for Africa as Europe, not let that only in the Chinese hands. This is my view. And Igbo, we'll stay on the Chinese hands. So we, just because of our clock, we'll have to just move you along. And uh, apologies, because we could stay longer on these very good points. But we do need to get to our audience questions. China, Italy, Belt and Road Initiative. How far, uh, some people think Italy, and uh, I think some people inside the country have some concerns about the impact of that buddying up, if you like, between the Italian leadership and Xi Jinping through the Belt and Road Initiative. What's your view? I, my, th my, my view is that uh, uh, Italy and China share the great history of a friendship from Marco Polo to <laughs> Matteo Ricci to arrive to our days. But today, Italy is not the market number one of, for China and uh, vice versa. The first partner for China today in Europe is Germany. And it's very important for export of Germany. Germany have a very great uh, commercial surplus. Germany don't, doesn't respect the European rules about commercial surplus. This is a very important thing, but it's uh, too much economic. Uh, uh, but I think it's, uh, it's correct to have a relation with China. I think my government, our government, not my government, the, the, the Italian government. Uh, Whoops, uh, Freudian slip there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Is this a comeback, Mr. Renzi? <laughs> I try to stop. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, I, I, I think uh, uh, China and the uh, Italian government uh, work together, and this is correct. The, re the, more co the most correct thing is an agreement between Europe and China. And for that, there is a problem of Italian position with this government, unfortunately. Because we, are <laughs> first of all, we made agreement with the Five Star Movement with the Yellow Vested, with Gilles Jean, and not with Macron. I think it's not a good idea. Exactly in the same days in which Yellow Vested tried to destroy Eliseum. And the reaction of Macron was... Uh, was, it too, was it an extreme uh, reaction of Mr. Macron to recall the ambassador in a way to take that conflict over the support of this populist government that uh, succeeded yours, well, over a kind of row, really, over their support for Gilets Jean, was that wise? The, 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 the reaction of Macron was correct, because if you have a, 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 a friend country who decided to went to Paris, not for meeting with a minister, but for meeting with the Yellow Vested, it's the minimum to recall the ambassador. So I think it's correct. But my view is that in Italy, populist will decrease, will uh, we'll have in crisis, not for the action of Macron or for the opposition, or for the, but for reality. Reality will show too much promise, over-promising. It's unbelievable for the populist government. Please consider the number of economy. You, you work for one of the most important uh, newspaper uh, uh, about economy around the world, maybe the most important. Oh. The forecast for GDP in Italy today is 1% of growth, but the consensus is minus 0, 0 0.2, not plus 1, but minus 0. Point. This means in the next six months we will have 20 billions to, found, to find. 20 billions. It's impossible. So Italian government will have a lot of problem in the next months for economy. But I come back to, econ to uh, foreign policy first. With China, the only solution is an agreement between Europe and China, first. Second point, I hope in agreement between Trump and Xi Jinping, because this will be very important for uh, uh, global tr uh, trade. Third, I think we have to work with China respecting the rules. 
This is the problem. But Silk and Road is a good initiative from uh, Xi Jinping. We have to offer an alternative as Europe. I'd just like to uh, hear a little bit more from you on where you think Europe goes now, particularly given the unstable sands of Brexit or, or, on which much is pitched, not only in, in the UK, but its, its impact. As we're talking, we don't even know whether Theresa May as Prime Minister can survive uh, these next few days and weeks. She had a bruising time with the EU Council. Her deal is in terrible trouble. How much is her fault and how much blame would you give the EU? <laughs> I think Brexit is an unbelievable defeat for um, British politics. It's a surprise, eh? because I love um, British politics. I consider British politics uh, the best around the world. I, I grew up with the, the, the idea of uh, Churchill. From Churchill to Tony Blair will be here and tomorrow. I loved a lot the British politics. The organization of Brexit, I joke with my friends, it's similar to Italian politics, not to British politics. It's a chaos. I don't and think you mean that as a compliment. Do you? I don't know. Maybe it's a compliment. I don't know. I, I, I felt a tom when I, I said, what, what now? Said, Nobody understands. OK, welcome to Rome. Uh, well, now welcome to Westminster. And uh, uh, this is a problem. I think there is a great responsibility f in the hands of uh, Theresa. Theresa made a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes. Nobody could deny that. I think there is a great responsibility also in the opposition side because Jeremy Corbyn wasn't at the level of the great challenge. Now the situation, there are two, two problems, two possibilities in my, in, my, in my view. The first is a real uh, new challenge in the parliament. Not easy, but if British member of parliament remember themselves there are british and not italian maybe they can they could uh, uh, achieve the miracle the second is the second referendum you a fan no i'm not a fan for referendum after i lost job that's my job so i hate referendum i think a referendum is a stupid thing no it's okay <laughs> No, but uh, I, I'm here with my friend Stefania Giannini. She is the deputy director of UNESCO today, but uh, she served as minister of education uh, in my government, in this case, in my government. And uh, we are the only one who lost the job after the referendum. So uh, we, we ate the idea of a referendum. But jokes apart, I think uh, in the chaos, or oh, member of parliament of UK found a miracle today with a new challenge and I think the only way could be also maintain UK in EU or a referendum. Please let me be frank with you. The question about a referendum was very clear. Will be easy leave e EU. And when some of, of us ask the question, well, what do you think about uh, Irish border? Irish border, Technali technicalities. What is about uh, single market? Technicalities. No, I repeat, you can win a referendum, but we lose the, the, the challenge with the reality. And this is true also for our referendum. Because today, populists in Italy I, I, sorry, come back to resection. I yeah. did also ask you about the EU, and I know that you've been a very strong proponent of EU reform. Uh, answer on Brexit, but do go beyond this Europe, and it, which you grew up politically, which you've also played a great role there I in terms of, of European politics. It was governed really in recent years by Angela Merkel and then uh, by later with President Macron sort of coming on as the, the other pole of that. Who has more power now? Macron. For me, the powerful leader today is uh, Macron, despite the internal problem in uh, France. But I think Emmanuel is the leader for a lot of reasons. First, for the organization of institution in France. He is the only one with three years in front of him. The French system, the French regime, uh, is similar to kingdom. Five years of uh, real power. Uh, Angela is very weak, is weaker respect to the past, and particularly respect to 2014. 
And uh, unfortunately, it's uh, true. Uh, um, Should she go and leave the field to Anna Great Kamba or whoever her successor may be? I don't know. I don't know. I think Angela, Angela it's impossible to. Uh, Angela, I, I fought against her and I worked with her for a lot of years and uh, I have a great respect and also a great debate and a great discussion and a great litigation with her. So uh, I have great friendship and great respect. But. Five years ago, she wants everything. She wants also the World Cup, but this is not uh, her uh, responsibility. She won in every uh, election. She came from an unbelievable uh, record of success. Now she's in troubles. If I can give her uh, uh, advice, I suggest to serve European Union in the next five years. Because uh, EU, deserve a great leader. And Angela, absolutely, is a great leader. In the Council, in the Commission, I don't know. She denied this possibility for the moment. We will see also for the future. But Angela is absolutely weak. Um, Spain is in trouble for election. Italy and Poland is in the hands of populists. UK is... Uh, Inside Brex, inside the EU, uh, out, uh, is in the tunnel, is uh, staying in the tunnel of Brexit, uh, is remaining the half uh, between uh, uh, tunnel. Uh, there are a good friend, there are a, a good, a list of good friends, the Prime Minister of uh, Denmark, uh, Mark Rutte, the Prime Minister of uh, Luxembourg, uh, Xavier Bettel, the Prime Minister of Portugal, Antonio Costa, the Prime Minister of Malta, Joseph Muscat. I have a lot of friends, but the real leader today is Macron. Despite and Gilets jaunes, I think Gilets jaunes will help Macron to present himself as the leader of the France in Europe. That's an interesting thought. And if there was one thing that you would say that Germany needed to change, given the criticisms in the Merkel era of its approach to the southern European economies and possible consequences, let's say it's uh, kramp karrenbauer as a likely successor, though of course we can all be wrong these days. Yeah. And frequently are, right? We will see. Uh, but what, what would you change? What does Germany not understand about Italy? Uh, Germany and Italy are, uh, had a lot of uh, uh, polemics in the narrative because a part of Italian politics and a part of German media describe the other with enemy, as enemies. And this is stupid. It's stupid from our side. Because the people who consider Germany the problem of Italian economy are stupid. Germany is absolutely linked to Italian economy and Italy is absolutely linked to German economy. Please, let me be very clear. The northeast of Italy, Veneto, Emilia Romagna, Lombardia, depends on the German economy. There is a connection, with a connection uh, based on the car, on the innovation. Uh, it, and this is the reason of the northeast in Italy, in terms of growth, is better than Baden-Württemberg. That's unbelievable, eh, that? The problem of GDP in Italy is not the northeast, it's the south. So we Germany doesn't need to change anything? <laughs> we have two Italies. We have the Italy of north and we have the Italy of south, unfortunately. But first, this is the point. The second point is the media, the media of Germany. Consider Italy as the... Mafia and the uh, traditional uh, polemics. Uh, th those are absolutely stupid things. Germany and Italy are totally connected. But where is the problem? Uh, I think that, very speaking, fr frankly speaking, first, Germany, Angela was a perfect leader in day by day. She's brilliant in terms of um, problem solving. I fought against her about Greece because uh, I came from a very good result in European elections, so my powerful was uh, strong and uh, I work and I stand up for Alexis Tsipras against the idea to push up uh, Greece from EU. We discussed with her about uh, flexibility, particularly with um, some minister of Angela Merkel. I don't make, I don't, without name, Schäuble. And, uh, <laughs> but no, it's, it's, it's a good friend. No, it's, it's all right, a, no one's listening. 
But I'm very diplomatic. Yeah, I have a career in, uh, in the foreign policy, absolutely. It's clear. I'm very diplomatic. It's a joke. And uh, uh, I, I, I think that Germany and Italy have a lot of things to do. The problem today in Europe is not the relation between Germany and Italy, but, but in my view, the problem is a relation with the Visegrad countries. Mm. Because Orban, Poland, and all the countries continue to say, oh, we, have, we love the sovereignty. OK. But they use our money to be, sovereign, to, to be fun of sovereignty. So they want to build a wall with my money. OK. You build the wall, I stop the money. I propose that. There is a new budget. Or we, achieve, we accept the idea of solidarity in two ways. Solidarity means I will give your money, but you cannot say no migration, not values, not culture, always stop the money. And I think this is a very important political question. The other is educative, educational question. And I think uh, this forum is particularly important because uh, the question who is changing the world, I think there is a very great expression in Latin. Uh, you know, prime minister, and master. Do you remember this expression? Minister, minister is the politician. Master is the teacher. Okay? Maestro in Italian expression. It's interesting. Two words came from Latin expression. Mini, minister came from minus. Latin expression means uh, less. Okay? Not much cop. Not much. Not much. Master, magister. It's an expression where mag you come from magis, more, bigger. In other words, in the Latin expression, the teacher is more important than politician. And this is very good. <laughs> Magister better than minister. You certainly got a target audience here <laughs> for that message. Uh, I'm going to throw a I'd question to you in a moment, be quite quick, fire, but I must ask you, you're obviously one of the most recognisable uh, politicians in Europe from the Italian stage. The country's political wins have not been in your favour. Are you sticking around in politics or what next? In Italy, everyone continues to stay in politics. <laughs> and uh, everyone, a lot of people told me, but you come back. In Italy, everyone come back more, uh, sooner or later. But I tried to change that with the referendum because my idea was an idea very Anglo-Saxon. Uh, it's a constitutional years, referendum. Ten-year yeah. ten constitutional referendum. The referendum I, I lost. Okay, I will continue, please. And, <laughs> and you, it's uh, you I, keeps I, talking about ah, it. It's, 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 a, it's a, an injury in my heart. <laughs> and, uh, but um, really, jokes apart, I think uh, this um, tentative was uh, destroyed. And now we continue with the, con the traditional change of government in Italy. I remember my first meeting with Obama, with President Obama. We discussed about Libya. And he told me, oh, there is instability in Libya. I know, President Obama, ah, they change the government every year. <laughs> then they look at me, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> because uh, Italy changed 65 government in 72 years. I, I, my government <laughs> have an unbelievable longevity, three years. And uh, we are the number three, the number four after Berlusconi, Cax, and Mussolini. <laughs> a very strong benchmark. <sighs> Let's get some questions in. Let's take uh, two or three in, in uh, quick fire rounds. I'll take gentlemen at the front and then the gentleman behind. If you could break the land speed record with the microphone, as our guest is so entertaining, I'm sure there'll be lots of questions. Let's get some quick ones in. Um, you have said a lot of time the word Europe. And also you talk that the word Europe is a synonym, synonym to you, like a security. And the, the problem is one that I'm also from Europe, and my country, the name of my country is Ukraine. And uh, if we, you know that we have war now in our country. You yeah? have to come it's, to the question, I'm so sorry. And it's also you. in Europe. And the, the question is that if you are talking about the security, even in my country, the question about bre Brexit, it's more about ambitious and not about the future. And the question about the security, even in, in Ukraine now, is more about the future. And the, my question is, don't you think that now the security on the border of the Europe is more exam to Europe about the future, 
even about if you're talking about the Brexit. Okay, now thank you. Let's take another question as well. There's a gentleman behind. I understand that you are Ukrainian from your shoes. <laughs> yellow oh, and yes. blue. Yes, you got yellow and blue shoes. The question was about the shoes. So another quick question, please. Hi, my question is, what would you say to the, some people who constantly keep saying that, especially for young generations, you are too, too, young, and too in, uh, young to be a politician, uh, you need more experiences, you are not mature enough. I am happy to hear your experience. Great, two questions there. Uh, two, Ukraine, so then, Ukraine two, and Europe, and uh, yeah, take, take secure, this. I try to, to be brief, yeah. uh, not Italian politician, but uh, European style. First, uh, about security. Security is a bigger, is a great problem in Europe. Ukraine question is about the relation with Russia. And uh, I, I became prime minister exactly the same date of Maidan, 22 February 2014, 22nd February 2014. And, uh, I, I uh, work with Pedro Poroshenko and the older leaders and friends uh, of your country. Uh, the question is not easy because uh, Russia is the best important neighbor of Europe and for, particularly for a part of Europe, the best, the, the, the great threat, the great menace. So I know the re relevance of that question. But at the same time, let me be very clear, I think we have a problem in security inside Europe. And this problem came from our Balier, from some suburbs, not from the external threat. In other words, we don't feel as Europeans the problem of Russian aggression as, as you, as Ukrainian, or some, some countries as Lithuania, Estonia, etc., felt. We, we live in a world in which the real threat came from our young people not involved in the life, the second generation. And this is the priority in the security today in uh, Europe. Of course, the relation with uh, Europe and Russia is a great question. Energy, value, ideals, etc., etc. I cannot uh, explain just in some, uh, in some words. But my view is that. The real question in security in Europe is, first of all, the internal security, not external. And there is the relation with Russia as a problem. Second point about young generation. Europe showing the Brexit referendum, young generation vote for maintain, for remain, and not for leave. And this is very interesting. Because the new generation grow up with the idea of Europe. It's normal. Uh, there are a lot of old people in my country who think about money and think about lira. <laughs> Nobody of new generation thinking about lira. Who is the lira? What is lira for my, my son? My son uh, uses euro. My son grew up with uh, every initiative in Europe, from uh, Euro Festival to Champions League, from uh, Interrail to Erasmus, Europe is uh, the land of normality for the new generation. What is the priority, in my view? The priority is invest in education, because we risk to divide the new generation in two parts. The educated part, the educated side, okay, are ready to work, to make a lot of trips, to stay in Europe as a citizen, and the part totally separated from the older people, and this is the problem of the big cities today in Europe. I think the priority for the next electoral campaign will a great plan of investment in the cities and the, in, the, in architecture and education. If I will be the, it's impossible, the new plan for I prefer, the new I, job, no, no, my, my, the job my, application is going in. No, no, I use it because this is an Italian expression. I change the new investment plan for. Do you know we? vote for a Juncker plan for investment uh, last uh, legislature. Okay, the real challenge, and I think everyone has to work for that, uh, is a plan of 100 billion 
of European institutions for the cities with education and infrastructure investment because we risk to lose the generation in the Ballet, in Paris, in Brussels, in London also if there is a Brexit, in some cities of the north of Italy, in Vienna. My friend, there is some, someone who came from France here, nobody, no French here. You, you need to talk to Mr. Macron about okay, that. Okay, France. We need to get in, some more questions yeah, in a second. France have 41% of new birds who come from second generation of Muslim people. This is the problem for the good relation, not the boat with the 49 people blocked by, by Matteo Salvini. I'm going to cut you off there because I think we've got a couple more questions. Uh, just a, a gentleman who has the mic. And, and also we've got, uh, in, in uh, these gender-conscious days, if anyone yeah, yeah. identifies as female and wants to ask a question, I'm taking you. Uh, yes, look at that. There's the assertive hand of the, the third wave feminism. Who's got the mic now? And can you all be quick, please? Salve, allora, sono Alessandro Giucci della Shout giovane, up, please. Della giovane Associazione dei Diplomatici qua a Dubai. And I'll, I'll keep this in English just so everyone understands. Basically, you. You, you briefly touched on visions. What is your vision for us future, for us millennials, especially, specifically Italian millennials? Quanti anni hai tu? Io ho 17. 17, 17. Nice question, thank you. A real millennial, a Generation Z really, because millennials are getting so old. They're nearly as old as me. Um, right, this lady here. Hello, my name is Daniela, I'm from Colombia, and my question is, what do you think we can do to better prepare students for the fourth industrial revolution and what are your thoughts in entrepreneurship education in schools? You could link those two, couldn't you? Just Daniela, um, I think is uh, Daniela Alessandro, uh, good question. First, uh, about uh, digital revolution and the job. I think that during the rev industrial revolution in UK, Ludis, mov Ludis movement destroyed the instruments for the fear of the disruption of jobs. Do you remember? Uh, when Gutenberg discovered the printing machine, a lot of monks and priests think, oh, what is our future without the possibility to copy with the hands the book? In every, in every <laughs> era of change, someone lost, someone won. The real question of today, in my view, is give a message of confidence in the new generation. Please study, please try, please try and please try again. Maybe you will fail, it's normal. In my new book I start with the expression of Michael Jordan, who is one of the most important leaders in the world. <laughs> Because he used this expression, in my life, I lost 300 match, and 26 times I received the crucial ball, and I made a mistake. But I continue, and I won everything. I think this is the modality. You have to become, in Michael Jordan, modality. Not for basketball, but for the job. The new generation have Today, if there is some of, of you have the child in the first year of primary school, uh, there are someone, uh, uh, yeah, perfect. Thank you so much for the very kind uh, 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 disponibility. What is the point? Your son, your daughter, will have in the next 25 years a totally different world. In the classroom of your daughter, we'll have maybe 24 people, okay, eight will have a job of today exists. 16 will have a job of today doesn't exist. The message is you have to open mind. You have to study. You have to invent. You have to try. And then we will see what happens. Because nobody, it's impossible to spoil the future. This is not a movie. But the only way, in my view, is that. Try, try it again. About uh, millennials. You are a very great generation. There is an expression wonderful of Os Oscar Wilde. The new generation is unbelievable. 
I want to belong to that generation. Because it's true. You are a new generation totally different with respect to us. I'm, I was born in 1975, so I'm not so old. <laughs> but uh, when I spoke with my son, my son, I'm more or less your, your age, because uh, 18 years, uh, I, I, I was touched from unbelievable difference. For example, about mobile. I, I explained to my son my, discussion, my first call to my wife, to my girlfriend, who became uh, her mother, his mother. I used the, the normal telephone. Hello, I'm Matteo. Can I speak with Agnese? And uh, told me, oh, without text, without WhatsApp, without mobile. Yeah, Francesco, there is a, a word before you without mobile. <laughs> with, oh, it's impossible because it's totally connected. <laughs> you, you live in a totally different world, but your values are very important. You are millennials ready to work for and to stand up for climate change, for women rights, I think for education. And so your generation is a great generation. Please don't have, don't fear about the future. Don't accept the dictator of populists who try to destroy the hope from politics. This is the real challenge for us. Great last answer. I'm just going to record the end of this and then you can give that nice big round of applause, which I know is building up inside you. And this is going to sound odd because it's two sentences at the beginning. Go to your happy place. You're listening to The Economist Asks. I'm Anne McElvoy. And this week we're asking, what can the European Union learn from Brexit? Then we had all the magic, and it really was. So, Matteo Renzi, you, you're, you're too amused. Get that, stop having a good time. It's a woman in the front having a good time. We can, we can start from the zero <laughs> minute. We can start from the beginning. Okay. Hello. It's a hard crowd. Matteo Renzi, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you.